Hey there, Internet. Welcome to the Hard On Gear channel, where I discuss and review my use and abuse knives and gear. So, not too long ago, I did a video on the Gerber Ghost Strike, which was long overdue because I've had this Gerber Ghost Strike for, geez, well over a year and just kept forgetting to do a video on it. It's not a knife that I carry a lot. Much like the Gerber Ghost Strike, the Groman DH Russell number one design Canadian belt knife is a knife that I've had for two years at least. And here it is sitting on my desk, finally getting a video of its own. I've had it in my uh, collection video back when I first started the channel almost a couple years ago. Other than that, it might have made a quick appearance or two in a few videos, but it's not something that you'll see too much on this channel because uh, as per the usual stuff that you'll see as far as my fixed blades go, we're talking about a little more modern tactical kydex and synthetic materials, black on black and all this kind of nerdy stuff. So uh, traditional hunting knives, skidding knives, belt knives aren't really my thing. Uh, this is a little bit more my type of belt knife, the uh, K-Bar USMC 1211. And I have my uh, K-Bar Large Heavy Bowie, which I don't have on me in this province. Oh, need some oil on that. Hard on gear. What are you doing to your stuff? A little bit of surface rust forming on that 1095 carbon steel on the K-Bar USMC. Whoops. We'll uh, fix that after I'm done recording and dealing with this video. But yeah, so not really my typical, wow, hard on gear. What are you doing? All right, so I'm going to try not to cut myself or my table or my stuff and uh, get through this video without any band-aids or first aid needed. Uh, yeah, so the Growin Belt Knife is a... East Coast, East Coast Canadian uh, company, Groman Knives, uh, Rudolph Groman, originally a Czech, I believe, and uh, D.H. Russell and Rudolph Groman designed this knife, which is the original Groman knife, and there's a whole series of skinning and hunting knives and different outdoors and survival bushcraft knives, all of which are typically all in the same kind of fashion, this uh, interesting kind of, yeah, I don't know, this uh, backwards design, uh, like backwards from the handle as opposed to something like the Topps Mill Spy Elite, say, which has a little bit more of like a forward curvature from the handle, uh, whereas you can see the DH Russell belt knife here kind of moves away from you. So much more of a uh, design for skinning. Uh, you don't want to be poking organs and stuff like that. You want to be able to kind of peel away the skin gently. I'm not a pro skinner or hunter by any means, but I have had to do my fair share of dissecting and messing around with uh, animals and skin and all that kind of stuff and trying not to poke the wrong stuff, removing fallopian tubes and stuff like that for different kind of biological samples, which are kind of above my head and pay grade, to be honest. But uh, what I do know is this was, of, I tried to put some of my different knives out when I was doing that work before, and this is a knife that works relatively well for that stuff. It's uh, got a decent edge on it, not the best factory edge, but after touching it up, it's uh, pretty capable of doing all kinds of work in the uh, skinning department. As you can see, I could probably skin myself quite easily if not careful. But it's still not something I find myself using much. I carry it here and there for maybe a few days and then I just find myself not using it. And for whatever reason, I just forget about it or end up using my folder more or whatnot. Uh, but I have put some effort into trying to get this thing some belt time. When I first bought it, it was a suggestion to me from my uh, manager at the time at my old job who uh, knew I was kind of traveling to the area where this knife is from. I uh, ended up picking this up and pretty happy with it. Wore it for probably the first month or so after I bought it just to give it some uh, belt time like I normally do with any new knife. And uh, yeah, still didn't really find myself using it much. And partially because the aesthetics aren't all that appealing to me and not to be said that this isn't a nice knife and a nice looking knife. It's just not what I typically find myself gravitating towards. But if you are into traditional hunting knives, probably worth taking a look at. As you can see, I got a little bit of a lanyard on the on the uh, base here. The Army Overlap Sheath that you see here is one of uh, multiple options that you get when you're going on the Groman website. The website's worth looking at. There's a little bit of customization options. Most, if not all, of their knives come in either carbon steel or stainless, so you've got your choice there. And... Uh, after that, you can go into, I think, a high saber flat grind, which is what I've got here, or a uh, regular flat grind. Aside from that, there could be some different serration, uh, serration options and different uh, blades, but I think generally speaking, those are your couple different division points when you're looking to customize your knife. Uh, uh, actually, the handle scales. There's probably, I think, six or seven different options, including maybe some uh, like staghorn and a couple different wood options and uh, maybe micarta, some different stuff like that. But yeah, worth checking out the website. Groman, uh, yeah, Groman knives. So on this side, we have Canada indented, uh, printed in on the blade and on the other side, 
me see if I can get you here. Groman, D.H. Russell, number one stainless. The steel is, uh, geez, if I'm not mistaken, something like a 5160 stainless steel. Somebody correct me down in the comments. I know that uh, it's not like a name stainless right off the hop, but it's just a high quality German, uh, German stainless. Steel nerds or anyone with more knowledge, please comment away down below. And while you're down there, if you don't mind, if you like this video and this kind of video, Hit the like button for me. Helps the uh, algorithm boost the channel up for more knife nerds to see this at the top of their feed. Let's do a couple of size comparisons and just talk quickly about a few specs. Uh, at some point, I'll do some bushcraft with this thing. Once I get my vehicle in the next month, uh, I've had my or haven't had my car for the last year since I joined the army. So uh, next month I'll have it on my weekends. I plan on hitting the woods having a little bit of fun and putting some of these knives to the test in some silly winter situations where I'll probably freeze my butt off and hopefully not die out in the bush. But the Groman belt knife here will get some absolute use. Uh, four inch blade, uh, I think one inch or so of total width. What are they, uh, like a elliptical style blade, I guess is what it is. I've heard it called before, which is pretty accurate. Definitely similar to a drop point, I guess, if you're gonna say like any other. Uh, type of blade style. I guess technically this would be a drop point. Again, knife nerds, correct me if I'm wrong on that. A little bit of jimming at the top, and then probably another six inches, four, five, six, yeah, about five, six inches of handle. The reason I put that lanyard on the base, I was actually kind of getting to this earlier and got distracted talking about the sheath. Uh, you'll see here when the knife is fully in this sheath, and some of the other sheaths have a little more exposure, but I don't want to lose this knife with these leather sheaths, and I'm just not as uh, trusting as I am with some of these secure locking like Kydex sheets that have like latches and stuff. Even the uh, Mora Garberg here is a little worn in at this point and it doesn't really hold into the sheath as much as I would like it to as, and as much as it used to. So kind of the same boat with this, the army overlap style is a little more secure, uh, but taking this out of the knife, oh by the way, as a lefty, non-ambidextrous sheaths, pain in the butt, like most traditional knives, you can't really get many universal leather sheaths. So uh, when I'm wearing this, it's typically reverse grip. I will peel this up and then grab this lanyard like this and then pretty much pull it out like that and then can pretty easily switch it around to a forward grip if I want. Uh, and yeah, easy enough again to reverse grip back in the sheath. Oh, and let me just put that back as if that was on my belt and then I'll put that in the right way because again, non-ampidextrous. But that's the way I carry it. The lanyard helps a lot. You can mess around with it and the different sheathing options obviously will change what you want to do with that. But again, that's uh, up to you to look for yourself on the website or wherever you're shopping to see what they have available. The website is probably the best spot to really customize and find the best options because I'm sure depending on how far away you get, like if you're buying these in the States, you're probably not going to have the same variety available to you as if you're in the actual Groman store or on the website, obviously enough. Uh, so yeah, size comparisons and then we'll finish this thing off. I don't think there's any other major specs I forgot to mention. I guess I'll say these are the rosewood scale, handle scales that I have on here, and uh, full tang, as you can see, one solid piece of stainless steel. Uh, it's a fairly high carbon stainless steel, too. I know it does hold an edge quite well. I don't know if comparing it to like S30V would really be a fair comparison. I don't know if it's quite there, but it's definitely a decent quality steel, holds an edge quite well. It sharpens uh, not terribly hard, but you can tell it's not like a cheap ass uh, OS 8 or ATR 13 MOV or anything like that. It's decent quality, and uh, obviously, Groman's picked this steel for a reason and uses it consistently with most of their knives. So we'll trust that they know what they were doing when they did that. But that's the uh, Topps Mill Spy Elite next to it. Pretty nice little EDC fixed blade, but not a small one. Uh, about as big as many people are going to want to carry as far as like an appendix or scout carry. Uh, it's getting even a bit big for the appendix carry as it starts to poke out and get a little bit uh, obvious on the front of your shirt. So uh, it gives you an idea that the Groman knife is about as maybe the same size, a little bit smaller than a buck 110. Definitely not a full size fixed blade compared to some of the stuff you got out there, but I bet you it's pretty similar to say a more companion oh this old more companion has seen some heat uh literally because this thing has been used on wildfires digging and tearing through the dirt and roots when there wasn't enough hand tools available and uh, the tips a little beat up from hitting rocks and it's a little bit rusty from being stuck in the uh, ground being wet and then stuck in the sheath and then put back in my gear bags for way too long but that's why we have twenty dollar more companions so that we can do terrible things to them and we don't have to do it to our nice 150 dollar more garbergs which still gets beat up fairly well and as you can see it's got a few little dings in the 
uh, top of the spine there from being baton and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, let's take out the Spyderco Bow River, a little more close to traditional knife, another one of the few leather sheath traditional knives I have. Just a nice $40 little, $40 little Spyderco knife. As you can see, the little Spyderco round hole TM, for whatever reason, they decided to put that in their fixed blades as well, which kind of uh, makes the structural integrity a little bit weaker, I would think. But if you break this fixed blade, Obviously, you were doing some terrible things to it because this is not a abusable, like hard use uh, wood fixed blade. The same as maybe something like this or the more companions, or even maybe some of these tougher hunting knives like the Groban knife. You can see a little bit more of a flimsy, sensitive tip here. Maybe a little bit thinner blade stock, and this is much more of like a gentle hunting canoe knife it's supposed to be uh designed as good for skinning fish and animals in general i guess but maybe avoid uh bushcraft and batoning and whacking on trees and stumps uh but anyways the size comparison of that and let's say the more garberg should be pretty fair oh uh, yeah so right in the middle of a garberg and a bow river has that for you all right let's just take out a few more knives for size comparison's sake and call it a day after that there's the glock field knife and the k-bar usmc if those are knives you're used to carrying the Roman won't even be a big deal to you because that is about half the size of that glock field knife let me see oh, let's take out the tour anaconda and hey thanks for the guesses uh, i think we got a guess or two on the uh uh, it's the handle scales being new. They are just clean as I did take this knife and uh, give it a nice wash. And uh, as you can see, the blade coating starting to wear off a little bit. But there is something different about the Anaconda, which I will talk about eventually, but might have to wait until somebody guesses what happened or what the difference is to that Anaconda. Continue to guess in the comments down below eventually someone's going to figure it out but i'm glad obviously i did a decent job of covering it up or else people would be uh, screaming about it but yeah uh pretty much the same length as the groman number one belt knife and definitely a little bit thinner let's take out a couple of folders there's the cold steel recon one and how about the cold steel 8015 folders folders uh just the rat model one Rat Model 2, classic size comparison for you. And last, not least, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And my new to me, Manix 2 Lightweight. And that should be all the size comparisons a person really needs for the Groman DH1 belt knife. If you like this knife and you think these are knives that you want to see more of on the Hard on Gear channel, let me know down in the comments. Again, hit click a like on this video if you want to see more of these videos or if you just like these videos or if you just like Hard on Gear channel and want to support it, all of which is appreciated. Uh, but yeah, specifically, if trad knives, traditional knives are your thing, I really won't know unless you comment below. I'll probably do a poll. Maybe the poll tomorrow will be about this traditional knife stuff and seeing how much you guys want to see more of this stuff that's not wording appropriately and i'm not wording right and words are hard so i'm going to end this video before i break myself so uh, thanks for tuning in to this one and this is the hard on gear channel signing off